What you're watching right now is one of the most emotional moments in sports history. Michael Jordan collapses on the floor in total surrender to his emotions after winning his fourth championship title with the Chicago Bulls. What made this moment especially memorable was the fact that everyone knew MJ had just lost his father a few years prior, and this championship was won on Father's Day out of all days. For sneakerheads like you and I, most of MJ's iconic moments are tied to a specific silhouette or colorway. Think of the Air Jordan 3 during the 1988 dunk contest, or the Jordan 12s he wore during the famous flu game during the 1997 finals. But the sneaker in question for this video is the legendary Air Jordan 11. Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. If you're new here, my name is Brian and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into sneaker culture, then you might want to consider subscribing to this channel because we make videos like this all the time and you're not going to want to miss an upload. Alright guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. By the end of 1993, Michael Jordan had already cemented himself as the GOAT, the greatest player of all time. After winning his third consecutive championship at only 30 years old, he had already established himself as one of the greatest players in basketball history, and a global icon at that. Then, right in the middle of his prime, he declared he was walking away from the game that he loved, a decision he made after the untimely death of his father, James Jordan. In 1994, Jordan signed a minor league baseball contract with the White Sox, a move that shocked and stunned the sports world. Equally perplexing was what to do with his signature basketball shoe line. In fact, Nike had plans to discontinue his signature line after the Jordan 10. However, while everyone else at Nike assumed the line was over, Tinker Hatfield was hopeful that MJ would return to the court and decided to start working on the design for the Jordan 11 in secret. By the way, if you've been watching this channel for a while and you don't know who Tinker Hatfield is by now, I don't know what to tell you. Tinker is the man behind all the important Jordan silhouettes after the Jordan 2. He's one of the greatest sneaker designers in the world. You should look him up. Tinker Hatfield. I'm going to just put my foot up on the table here because uh, this was a super high performance shoe called the Jordan 11. And uh, this shoe was like, I think it's my all time favorite shoe because there is so much technology in this shoe. Let's go over some of the technology that Tinker Hatfield is referring to. The most notable and to be honest, the most classy detail of the sneaker is the patent leather. While studying Michael Jordan's playing, Tinker noticed that when Michael would change directions during an intense moment in the game, his foot would roll over the sole of his shoes. To counter that, Tinker used patent leather which helped prevent this from happening. You can also thank the classy patent leather for the cheesy trend of pimping out your groomsmen and Jordan 11s for your wedding. Seriously though, it does go good with the suit. Jordan Brand even released a new colorway called the Cap and Gown which recognizes the Air Jordan 11's unique place at graduation ceremonies. The Air Jordan 11 also came equipped with the carbon fiber shank that dramatically made the shoe lighter than previous Air Jordan models. The mesh on the shoe is called Cordura Nylon, also known as Ballistic Mesh. This aided in making the sneaker lighter as well, but it's a tough material that Tinker used to withstand MJ's high level of playing. Not a huge surprise, but clearly one of the great comebacks since Burt Reynolds' hairline. It came in a two-word statement which is now just begging to have a Nike campaign built around it, quote unquote, I'm back. That's all Jordan said on Saturday. That was really all Jordan needed to say as his 17-month retirement came to an end. He will be back on Sunday when the Bulls play the Pacers, and probably not so coincidentally, the game is on national TV. The Bulls arrived in Indianapolis on Saturday night, and while Michael Jordan was not on the team charter, he will be there by game time, and that makes Phil Jackson happy. We're all very happy about this. Uh, we think it's going to be great for our basketball club. We hope expectations, which are going to be high, aren't overreaching for what we have as a basketball club. We're just glad he's getting back on the court. I'm happy that he's back. I think he's going to add a lot to uh, the NBA, especially in the playoffs. I think he's back because he was missing competition and he's ready to go again. Michael Jordan debuted the Air Jordan 11 in a legendary Concord colorway during Game 1 of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Chicago Bulls and Orlando Magic. According to Tinker Hatfield, Nike wanted to wait to release the shoe. But Michael didn't care. He loved the Air Jordan 11 so much that he couldn't wait to wear them on the court. This came at a price though. Due to the shoe's black and white color blocking and lack of Chicago Bulls red color, Jordan was fined $5,000 for wearing the sneakers. This only lasted for the first two games of the finals. For game three, MJ hilariously borrowed a pair of Air Flight 1s from Penny Hardaway. 
By the time Game 4 rolled around, Nike made Jordan an 11 with a black upper to avoid the fines. The problem with the shoes, he has not been wearing the right shoes, but today he will sport a brand new pair of shoes. They are black patent leather, they are very stylish. The only one thing is they are a little bit out of style because on the back of them they have number 45. So if he's not wearing his old shoes, I guess there's nothing else that I could do but take his old shoes home. Marv? Yes. <laughs> The colorway in question is what we know today as the Space Jam 11s, named after the movie because he wore them throughout the entire film. The Jordan 11 first released to the public in November of 1995 in the Concord colorway. The black and red colorway, also commonly referred to as the red colorway, and the white and Columbia blue pair released the following year in 1996. The initial release of the shoe was so successful that Nike decided to drop low top versions of the shoe, which resulted in Tinker Hatfield doing a summer, more laid back version of the 11, the Air Jordan 11 IE. Now, this shoe kind of has a reputation for being one of those sneakers that you either love or hate. Personally, I think the shoes are pretty dope, I, you know, in the right colorway, and if you could pull them off, I think the Jordan Low IE isn't too bad, but what do you guys think? Leave your thoughts below. Guys, real quick, I don't know about you, but ever since the pandemic happened, I've been listening to a ton of podcasts. And one podcast in particular that I've really been enjoying is called The Close Minded Podcast. Sam, the founder of the podcast, is a close friend of the channel. He's been friends with Nacho many years. Um, I just finished their episode on the history and the cultural impact of the t-shirt. They just put one out on camouflage, the history of denim. And it's just super dope, super well researched. I wouldn't be sharing this with you guys if it wasn't dope and we want to help them out so the links in the description have a listen to this podcast let us know what you think also should nacho and i start a podcast uh, we've been thinking about it back to the video The OG 11s were retroed in 2000, and in 2001, the classic cool gray colorway was released. I love this colorway, it's so dope. 2001 was a huge year for the Jordan 11, with the Space Jams finally getting a proper release. The Space Jams were a highly anticipated release. After the release of the Space Jams, Nike sort of set the tone for the future of their retro program for Jordan. In fact, Jordan brand releases either a retro or a new Jordan 11 colorway annually. Since 2006, every year, usually around the holidays, a Jordan 11 ends up on Santa's list. In 2012, the public was so fervent about the Jordan 11 Concord retro that they actually caused a mall stampede across several cities in the country. You will not believe all the reports of violence that broke out when people rushed to get the newest pair of Air Jordans. A crowd busted through this door in Indiana. And remember, as you're watching these pictures, this is all over shoes. A few people got trampled. Doors were ripped right off their hinges. The Air Jordan retro shoes just went on sale early Friday morning. Since I was a kid, I've been, you know, working hard just to come up here early in the morning just to wait in <laughs> line to get these shoes. I was the first person out of everybody that was out here to get these right here. How many pairs of Air Jordans do you have? I have about nine pair of Air Jordans, but it does not matter about those. It matters about these right here. The silhouette has been retro dozens of times throughout the years. Not only is it being constantly retroed, but Jordan brand continues to use the Jordan 11 as a canvas for new colorways and to experiment with new materials. I'd go as far as to say it's probably the perfect Jordan shoe ever made in terms of functionality and style in one package. This year marks the shoe's 25th anniversary, so hopefully we'll see some kind of Jordan 11 drop during the holidays. Maybe some breads again? I don't know, I'd love me a pair of breads 11s, but I always take an L. Hey Jordan, I'm a size 10 by the way. But hey, if you're interested in learning more about the history of Jordan shoes, check out this playlist that me and Nacho put together of all the Jordan history videos that we've made in the past. I think you're really gonna enjoy them, so go ahead and click on that, and we will see you over in those videos. Thank you guys so much for the support. Please do us a favor and give us a follow on Instagram. It is at Nacho Average Finds. It would really mean the world to us. Uh, hit us up in the DMs, comments. We love to hear from you guys. We always respond. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for the continued support. And yeah, see you in those videos over there. Peace.